Good evening, I'm Paul Fraser and this is the 7 o'clock news from Bahrain Television. His Majesty King Hamid bin Isa Al Khalifa received today at Safriya Palace Sudan's Health Minister Idris Abu Kurda and Sudanese Foreign Affairs State Minister Kamal Ismail, who delivered to His Majesty the King a written letter from Sudanese President Omar Hassan Al Bashir. The letter included highlighting the bilateral brotherly relations and ways to bolster these relations in all fields. The letter also included topics of common interest on the Arab and international levels. Sudan's health minister conveyed greetings of the Sudanese president and his wishes for progress and prosperity to the Kingdom of Bahrain. His Majesty the King then requested for his greetings to be conveyed and his wishes for the prosperity of Sudan. His Majesty King Hamid praised the bilateral cooperation level in various fields, affirming keenness to enhance these relations to benefit both countries and their peoples. Sudan's Health Minister expressed thanks and appreciation to His Majesty's keenness to bolster bilateral relations, hailing the level of progress and achievements made by Bahrain. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, received today at Gudabia Palace His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamid Al Khalifa. The Royal Highnesses discussed local affairs, affirming the government's interest in adopting more initiatives that will elevate the government's performance and ensure sustainable development, which lines with the demands to face challenges and enhance progress. They emphasize complete support for meetings that bring together all government institutions, leaders and stressed the importance of these meetings in ensuring administrative advancements in the government body and noted that it will result in enhancing staff performance. The Royal Highnesses affirm continued development to the government body which will provide better quality services and that will result in achieving the aspirations of the Kingdom and its people under the wise leadership of His Majesty King Hamid bin Isa Al Khalifa. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, received today at Gudabia Palace, Speaker of the Representatives Council and members of the Representatives and Shura Councils. In the presence of former Speaker of the Representatives Council, Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Dahrani, His Royal Highness praised the contributions of the Representatives Council to the National March and affirmed the government's keenness to support the Council in order to achieve the best interests for the country and its people. He affirmed his constant follow-up regarding citizens' affairs in the field of education, health and housing and stressed the importance of providing the highest levels of these services. His Royal Highness also confirmed the government's keenness to support all efforts aimed at enhancing economic progress. He stressed the economic policies implemented by Bahrain previously are being implemented today in various countries which affirms that the economic movement of the Kingdom is on the right track. His Royal Highness discussed with the audience topics on regional and international matters. He stressed the need for an enhanced cooperation amongst the GCC countries and increased the number of meetings and visits in order to protect citizens and provide the needed services and to stop all attempts aimed at threatening the GCC countries' economy, security and stability.
His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, chaired the weekly cabinet meeting at Gudubia Palace today. In the presence of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister, the cabinet expressed deep condolences to the family of Sergeant Issa Abdullah Badr, who sacrificed his life whilst performing his national duty, participating alongside the Saudi-led Arab coalition to protect the rights and legitimacy of Yemen. The Cabinet then congratulated Bahrain's achievements in the Olympics, first on an Arab level, 10th on an Asian level and 48th on an international level. The Cabinet hailed the role of the players and their high spirits. His Royal Highness praised the efforts of the representative of His Majesty the King for charity works and youth affairs, Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, President of Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa and Deputy President of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports and President of Bahrain Athletics Association, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, and their contribution to make this achievement. His Royal Highness also hailed the role of the Supreme Council for Women in supporting the government and empowering women to undertake more effective roles in society, lauding the achievements of the Council led by Her Royal Highness Princess Sabika bin Ibrahim Al Khalifa. The Cabinet expressed deep condolences to Turkey's president for the terrorist attack in Gaziantep, Turkey, that resulted in the killing of dozens of people, wishing the injured a speedy recovery. The Cabinet affirmed Bahrain's solid stance towards Turkey, stressing the need for joint international cooperation to combat terrorism. His Royal Highness then called for the monitoring of taxi driver services and the stopping of all unlicensed drivers so there won't be any effect on the income of taxi drivers in the country. He also called for the monitoring and inspection of slaughterhouses and in order to make sure that the right legal measures and conditions are being obeyed. His Royal Highness then called the Health Ministry to provide better health care services for patients and directed to respond to patients' complaints and take the necessary necessary measures to solve them. The Cabinet looked into a number of measures that supports the role of colleges and training institutions in order to increase training opportunities for people looking for jobs and provide them with the right qualifications. The Cabinet directed the Coordination Committee led by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince to follow up on the matter. The Cabinet stressed that the reorganisation of the ministry structure should enhance performance, responsibilities and competencies. The Cabinet approved the restructuring of the Foreign Ministry in accordance with the government's policies in the diplomatic and legal fields and its regional and international ties. The Cabinet approved issuing two executive lists for commercial registration laws and commercial company laws in order to regulate commercial registration and the commercial records and the process of how to submit requests, renew them or cancel them. The Cabinet approved three projects related to commercial registration regarding commercial registration fees, commercial activities fees and fines for the delay in the renewal of commercial registrations. The Cabinet approved the amendments of a number of ministerial decisions related to recovering part of the cost for some services provided by the Ministry of Justice, Islamic Affairs and Endowments. The Cabinet also discussed the Kingdom's approval of Paris Climate Change Agreement and referred it to the Concerned Committee to follow up on the matter. The Cabinet approved the amended protocol of the Bahraini-Turkish Agreement regarding air services. The Cabinet referred two draft laws to the Representatives' Council regarding amending two topics of civil service law of law by decree 48 of 2010. The Cabinet referred a draft law to the Representatives' Council on amending topic 11 of the decree by law 78 of 2006 regarding insurance against unemployment. The Cabinet also referred a draft law to the Representatives' Council on amending Topic 3 of the Decree by Law 1 of 1996 regarding water and electricity. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, met today at Gudabiya Palace the new President of the National Security Agency, Sheikh Talal bin Mohammed Al Khalifa. His Royal Highness congratulated him on the newly appointed position, wishing him success in carrying out his national responsibility and commending his expertise and competence.
His Royal Highness affirmed the central role of the Kingdom's security service in achieving stability and security and maintaining national gains achieved in the prosperous era of His Majesty King Hamid bin Isa Al Khalifa. He praised the efforts of the security service agency and its employees and the strong cohesion of Bahraini society. His Royal Highness pointed out that with a maintained security and stability, the Kingdom will be able to achieve sustainable development and implement its strategic goals. Sheikh Talal bin Mohammed Al Khalifa expressed thanks and appreciation for His Royal Highness's guidance and congratulations, affirming keenness to meet the aspirations of the wise leadership and the people of Bahrain. Bahraini women have made large strides in various fields of development, ranging from social affairs to political involvement. Thanks to the royal care of His Majesty the King, the Supreme Council for Women, the SCW has been supported to empower women to undertake more effective roles in society. More in this report. The Supreme Council for Women, the SCW, celebrates today its 15th anniversary as it was established in 2001 as per royal order issued by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. Under the presidency of Her Royal Highness Wife of His Majesty the King and President of the Supreme Council for Women, Princess Sabika bint Ibrahim Al Khalifa, the SCW plays a major role in empowering Bahraini women and merging their needs in the government development programs to ensure the sustainability of their positive contribution to the National March. The Royal Initiative to establish the SCW and promote Bahraini women's role in public life is one of the great achievements that came as a result of His Majesty the King's reform project in 2001, which provided constitutional and legal amendments, as well as clear provisions that preserve women's rights and status. Over the past 15 years, the SCW has developed experience within the organized institutional work, which paved the way for it become one of the region's leading organizations that aim at empowering women activating their role in building themselves, families and nation, and ensuring non-discrimination against them through constant cooperation and coordination with state departments and support of the private sector and the civil society institutions. The 16 members of the SCW that represent all segments of the Bahraini society worked in activating its prerogatives, drawing up plans and programs related to women, achieving goals and conveying its decisions to the competent authorities. The successful establishment of the Supreme Council for Women is a source of pride to all Bahraini women, and further efforts must be exerted by them to build on its achievements and continue its glorious march. Now from all the local to the biggest global business news, it's across Tabala. Thank you, Paul. Good evening and welcome to the Business News on Bahrain TV. Bahrain's all share index closed at 1,151.78 points today, falling 5.17 points below last closing. The decrease was in the commercial banks and services sector, while investors traded mainly in the commercial banks sector, with 55% of total shares. 51 equity transactions included 1,316,324 shares, worth 457,659 Bahraini dinars.